Hello and welcome to Print and Snaish Alex Philip. Well, in a major flip to India's pursuit of hypersonic missiles, the DRDO has successfully carried out a cutting edge active cooled scramjet combustor ground test for a massive 120 seconds for the first time. How important is this test? What does this mean for India's pursuit of hypersonic missiles? To, to understand this, I have with me the former DRDO chief, uh, Dr. VK Saraswath, who is now a member of the Niti IO. Now, for those, you know, you're already aware that he is the he is the man who is, you know, who spearheaded the development of India's strategic and tactical missile systems. And he is actually responsible for the development of country's first liquid propulsion engine and missiles, namely the Prithvi, Dhanush, and Prahar. So welcome to the print, sir. Someone, first question to you, what is this test that the DRDO has carried out, sir? DRDO has carried out the development trial of their scramjet engine. Scramjet engine is one in which the combustion of the propellants take place at supersonic Mach number. Okay. It is different from the flight of the missile at supersonic Mach number. The speed of the air with, when it enters into the combustion chamber is more than the speed of the sound. So that's why it's called supersonic. It is equivalent to burning a candle in some kind of a hurricane because it just does not stabilize. The whole technology is involved in stabilizing a flame under such extreme conditions of its speed and temperature. Now, this scramjet engine has been designed basically to suit the requirements of hypersonic missiles yeah. which fly at Mach number 5 or Mach number 6 or Mach number 8. When such missiles fly, the, the conventional ramjet system is not suitable. So, you need to design a scramjet system which is able to reduce the speed of the air which enters to supersonic speeds and then make it burn and produce the net positive thrust. So this is the technology which DRDL has been able to demonstrate during this test. Very important strategically for meeting the mission requirements of long range hypersonic cruise missiles of different varieties. So, so but doesn't India have a hypersonic missile capability because we recently carried out a test so what is the difference between that hypersonic and the one that India is pursuing now? So recently India carried out what is called a hypersonic glider test. There's a, there's a difference between a hypersonic glider and a hypersonic cruise missile. Okay. The hypersonic glider is basically a missile in which the projectile is launched to an altitude to attain a velocity of hypersonic speed and then from that altitude it comes down onto the ground at hypersonic speeds without any propulsion. Oh, okay. It will, have, it will have controls, it will have all the guidance, but it will not have propulsion. That's why it's called a glider. And that is the experiment which was done by TRDO very recently. Successfully yeah. they have done which is also a major breakthrough as far as the technology is concerned. Okay. Because such a technology will also enable us for tomorrow uh, engaging, moving ships and things like that, like, like the other countries have done. Whereas in the case of a hypersonic cruise missile, which flies at low altitudes, not more than 30 kilometers altitude, and at Mach numbers, 5 to 8 Mach numbers, it is continuously propelled powered all the time till, the, till you reach the target. So it has to inhale air from the atmosphere okay. and hence it has within the atmosphere and then it should be able to produce the necessary thrust. So this is a cruise missile program which India has launched and that's why it's called hypersonic cruise missile program. So, so you know, we have the BrahMos. BrahMos is supersonic, right? Uh, so, this would be like a BrahMos 2.0 kind of a missile system? BrahMos is uh, a cruise missile, supersonic cruise missile. It will be beyond BrahMos. Okay. BrahMos and this would also involve the range? Would also be longer? Yeah. 
both in terms of the speed and range, it will be more. For example, the Brahmos is only about 300 kilometer range. Inside. Yeah. And also the speed is only about Mach number 3.5 to 4. Exactly. Whereas this missile, hypersonic cruise missile will be flying at Mach numbers of 5 and 8. And today's test, when you take 120 seconds of burn time, it will it tells you that if you are flying at a speed of Mach number 5, that means almost about 1500 meters per second. Wow. When you multiply multiply it by 120 seconds, what is the kind of range you are likely to get? So oh, wow. that's the kind of difference. It will have you immense capability in terms of range and in terms of the reach what you will have for meeting the enemy targets. So I know you 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 are a busy man in a short of time. Just one, one two questions that I wanted to know more about. Uh, for example, the Defense Ministry has said that this development of this technology, the central to this breakthrough is the development of endothermic scramjet fuel. What is this fuel that the, uh, the DRDO is talking about, sir? Basically, I want to tell you, you use two terms, active cooling. Yeah. And you also use this for in a hypersonic missile. One of the major problem is when any missile or aircraft flies at hypersonic speeds in the atmospheric conditions below 30 kilometers. The temperature of the air when it is hitting the body and the it enters the intake is very high. The body due to aerodynamic heating develops very high temperatures to the region of about 1400 to 1500 even more degrees Celsius and in some parts of the body could be as high as 2000 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, such a body has to be pulled throughout its journey. Now, for that you need a fuel which can absorb more heat as much as possible. That's why it is called endothermic fuel. The coolant which is used here is called, now in such cases we can't provide other than the fuel which is generating the power the only there is no other fuel which can cool it so that fuel itself is used as a coolant and hence it is called an endothermic fuel because it has got high heat absorption capability oh okay and so you this know it has been by drdo today it has been talked about by the drdo today it's a big development for india and another thing yeah. is the advanced ceramic thermal barrier coating the tbc which has high thermal resistance and capable of operating beyond melting point of steel. Yeah. So these are new technologies that have been brought about by India. As I mentioned to you, one of the major programs which was initiated when we took up the hypersonic missile development was to develop special materials. Because as I mentioned to you, right from the nose tip of the missile to the tail of the missile, the temperature variation at the nose tip could be as high as 2000 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And at somewhere on the skin, it could be as high as about 1400 degrees Celsius. Wow. You know, the melting point of steel is only about 1500 degrees Celsius. So, exactly. so, obviously, we need to have materials which will withstand such high temperatures. So, DRDL has developed along with its sister laboratories like DMRL and others. Yeah. Uh, specific materials which are based upon metal metal matrix, composites special thermal barrier coatings using very high temperature ceramics. Ceramics can withstand high temperatures, but ceramics cannot be converted into a real product. So yeah. the coatings are for that and DRDL has been able to now provide thermal barrier coating so that the skin temperature while it is 1800 degrees Celsius inside below the coating is only about 100 degrees Celsius. That wow. is the kind of gradient we are able to achieve in this kind of a system. These are special technologies, special materials, their manufacturability, their application, their integration. They are all specific complex technologies which have been developed by DRDL in this particular program. So thank you so much. So there's no doubt about the fact that there's a major achievement, not just for the DRDO, but also for India. By when do you think of we will finally have a hypersonic cruise missile, sir? Sooner I'm than quite, I'm quite, quite confident that after this test, what they have demonstrated, which was one of the major breakthrough, 
I think they will be able to integrate it with now with the booster and they will be able to test it as a missile as early as possible. Uh, time schedules, of course, will be dictated by the kind of infusion of capital funds and things like that. But it's going to be in near future. Well, thank you so much, sir, for joining here at The Print and telling us more about this amazing technology that India now has. And hopefully, as you said, the hypersonic cruise missile would be a reality sooner than expected. Thank you so much, sir.